Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the Burgers and Fries podcast, your Bob's Burgers companion podcast. With you again is Brian and Ryan, and we're here despite the blistering Don't, don't cold. you mean burgers and fries? Yeah, exactly. Because uh-huh. uh-huh. it's so effing cold out right now? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, we're listening to this and don't know anything about the weather in the Midwest of the United States. We are having burgers. negative 50 below weather. We just got five inches of snow the other day on top of what we already had, what, at least 12 inches on the ground accumulated over the last couple uh, of days? I don't think it was 12 inches, but uh, I, I mean, we, I think total we have about 12 to 15 now. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell because it's all shoveled, so it's on top of each other. I'm so. running out of places to put my snow. And I mean, in, in, in the area we are, uh, we, we, you know, we get a lot of drift and we get, mm-hmm. the, we're at the end of a cul-de-sac, so we get a lot of snow from there. So it looks like a Dude. lot more, but then like if I go into the backyard, if I look in the backyard, there's areas that look like there's two feet there, but then there's areas that look like there's like one inch because mm-hmm. it's just, it's blowing so much. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's blowing around a lot. The the temperatures mm-hmm. dropping like crazy. Like we were gonna go, well, Holly and I were gonna go to the Y tonight and like get a workout in real quick, grab some dinner, come <laughs> back in, Good and then, like hunker down. But we got a message from the YMCA on our phones because we we have the app, and it's like the Y is closed tonight at 5 p.m. and will not mm-hmm. reopen. And will reopen on the 31st. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday yep. at noon. Mm-hmm. And it's That's like one of those wow. things in town are mm-hmm. reopening. Yeah, just because it's thing, so because like, it's so cold, it's, and nobody wants just... to go outside. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly essential things that are going to stay open. Right. Um, so, like, the hospital will be open. Your bars. Obviously. Huh? The bar, you think bars will be open? I think those are on a, a case-by-case basis. Uh, yeah, I'm actually wondering if uh, if Beer Rock is open. Uh, the Sounds like the movie theaters are open. Oh, perfect. Let's go. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, if, let's if, get out. If only I... Yeah, I mean, I could take a sick day tomorrow, but there's no point. I have to, I have to do no, some well, work. No, you wouldn't want to You wouldn't want to get out in your car in negative 50. No, you know, that'd be so gonna, bad. Your car would... Well, your car's at least in a driveway. You'd be like... Or it's in a garage. You could start mm. yours at least. But leaving it out, you know, for three hours could be like... Your car would be, be no, bad. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um, exactly how it sounds. But, uh, yeah, I mean... But, uh, you know, grocery stores will be open, and I guess gas stations will be, but... Like the malls are closed. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of the, I'm sure a lot of the retail stores are going to be closed, or again open on a on a must basis or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have to figure. I don't know. Campus is closed, so mm-hmm. you know, except for essential uh, workers, which are like the people who have to do like, uh, like certain types of research have to be done every day. So those people are going to have to show up to work. Um, I think the the on campus dining staff has to be there for like meal plans. Right. Have to that makes to sense. Work. That makes sense. But pretty much anybody else is non-essential. Um, that makes sense. Well, people who take care of animals, like the like the research that they do on those, those have they have to show mm-hmm. up even if it's not essential because they have to obviously be taken care of. Right. So, um, but yeah, everything's pretty much closed for Wednesday. Yeah. So pretty here we much. are, bundled up on a Tuesday night. In our, in our houses again. This is this. This is the second time we've had to do. Uh, through the roll, it's just internet really bad weather. podcast, it's... The, the weather's been terrible. We've got so much snow last time we couldn't do it, and now it's just way too cold to go outside. So this is just a lot easier, a lot smarter. <clears throat> we, don't yeah. to, we don't have to worry about going out and freezing our digits off. So and, I mean, and let's be honest, this is how a lot of people do podcasts, anyways. They they do. I I've time. noticed that that does happen sometimes. Um, yeah, but their sun quality is a lot better than ours. So we still have to figure out how to tweak. I mean, ours. Was, I mean, ours isn't. I mean, we do it like this. It's not terrible because no. I just take your audio no. file and right. we go to town. I'm not just recording, you know, the the, the Skype call or something like we have to right. do sometimes. This is right. actually two two legitimate audio files right. that like, combined like, together. Yeah, like with our uh, Luke Grant interview. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that one was through a phone call, so that mm-hmm. was even because that was that was a Google phone call recorded as the call was happening. It was kind of kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, it, it still was. sounded fine. Yeah, no, it sounded great. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we uh, we are we are bundled up. We've been watching some Bob's Burgers, uh, and this week is no exception to good episodes because it is another special Halloween episode. It is a special Halloween episode, and it's going to be really interesting after your intro right there because I don't know if our numbers are going to match up on this one. I just said it was another special one. I didn't say it was amazing and good. Oh, okay, because yeah, you you let it, you let it off to be that way in in my yeah. interpretation of your words. So we'll see what happens. Well, I'm sure because they're going to be real interested to see what's going on with the numbers. Yeah, at the end I of this mean, one. this is this episode, season five, episode two, Tina and the Real Ghost. Right. Um, 
It is the what now? Is it the third? Ugh, sorry, no, oh, sorry. my phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was that? Oh uh, well, that that was my phone. A, um, a my, my yeah, my brother's calling. Well, it's uh, it's my 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 ringtone. Oh okay. So my my brother's calling me because he wants to know if we're going to spring training again this year. I'm trying to plan it out because that's where my territory is for work. Is is yeah. in Arizona. I'm like, well, if I go for work, you can come with. Just know that I won't be with you every day because I'll be working. But you'll you know you can crash in the hotel. You know, yeah. kind, of, kind of thing. And and I told him I'd have an answer today. Well, guess who doesn't have an answer today? Me. You don't. Because I didn't have a chance to meet with my uh, with my coworkers to see yeah. if that was something that I could actually make feasible. So he's calling me now. Tell him to back off. Yeah, right. We got Bob's Burgers to record. Well, I feel bad. I, re I really want to. I really want to go. I wish I knew, but hopefully I can solve it. You know, have an answer by the end of the week. So anyway. Yeah. I know that's that's everything yeah. that's new and exciting going on in my sure. life. Sure, sure. Tina and the Real Ghost. Yes, back to back uh, to this November, episode. So this this episode actually aired after Halloween, November second, twenty fourteen. That's okay. So only only, only missed it by a couple of days. Yeah. Well, I mean, and this was, you know, this of course being on a Fox show, uh, you you have the World Series to compete with, and so you know you you have to plan out that far ahead, and so even if the World Series was over, you're not pushing your your episode up a week so it had just happened to be that it was after halloween and mm -hmm. it was still kind of halloween weekend like halloween was friday so it's not like it was a huge thing um but yeah november 2nd 2014 written by stephen davis and kelvin you directed by friend, and friend of the podcast stephen davis Keon, yeah and kion he lim uh i got a pretty short and sweet synopsis here tina begins an out of this world romance with a ghost that is believed to be living in the belcher's basement short and sweet good to eat mm-hmm and pretty Red much the whole bit. episode revolves around that premise. You know, there's maybe yeah. kind of a side B story with Bob and the ghosts, hunters, but that's really about it. Yeah, yeah. There's not, yeah, there's not too much that goes on in this episode. Mm -mm. Uh, before we get into the uh, episode review and where we watch and pause the stuff, I do want to make quick mention. Yeah. Uh, about the fun trivia thing I deciphered this weekend. Yes. And got confirmation from yes. uh, Lauren. Which is very cool. On, which is really Lauren Bouchard, you know, if anybody who's not familiar with when we say Lauren, you know, it's Lauren Bouchard. He's the creator of this show. We're kind of good friends, so it's no big deal. Lord, <laughs> because he Lord answered back one of, of our burgers. tweets. Yeah, exactly. The creator. Hence, he, he shall be known forth. Sure. So the, I, I was uh, reading up on some, just some, because I'm a history nerd, so I was reading up on some history. <laughs> nerd. And I, right. And I was reading about Alexander the Great and just kind of, you know, what, what he had done. And I came across the name of his horse, which apparently is a really famous name of his horse. I can't believe I didn't remember it at the time. Uh, but the name of his horse that he had was Bucephalus. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that popped in my head was, haha, it sounds like Bob Cephala from the Equestrian of this episode. And I was like, wait a second, that cannot be a coincidence because this show does not have coincidences. They are no, very, it does not. They are very good with using history and, and, and other just puns and play on words to get their point across. And you know, especially since it was an equestrian episode and he was playing a horse, I was like, that has to be, that has to be the reason. So I tweeted out to Lauren and I said that this is a show that keeps on giving. You know, can you confirm that Bob's character, that Bob's horse, Bob Cephala, was just a play on Alexander's Bucephalus? And he confirmed it, which was really awesome. So yeah, that, again, that is just, pretty awesome. And, you know, and just in previous and repeat viewings and all this other stuff, there's always things that we're finding. Um, oh, always. It, everything's gonna... very subtle, uh, but, you know, like to the to the viewer, but they, they take a lot of time to put things together as far as their puns go and, and the jokes and the attention to detail that we've mentioned over and over again. So it's always really nice to get confirmation on something like that that we glossed over on the third or fourth viewing, at least, of, of that particular episode. Yeah, because that's not the... I mean, that's that, the, when we watched it for the review... That wasn't the first time that I had seen that episode. It wasn't the fourth time I've seen that episode. It was I had seen that episode plenty of times. But it's just those things that you go back, and then if you do some external reading or you look into other things, you're thinking, oh, my God, that has to be – it's not a coincidence. And then it's just – it's great to get confirmation on that. Um, I know Dan wrote that episode, uh, the, the voice actor. For yeah, Dan Mintz, yeah. Uh, so, but he doesn't have a Twitter, I don't think. So I was just like, I'll just tweet out to Lauren because he can. He was, you know, he's always there and part of the writing and learning that stuff. So I just thought it was really cool, uh, and it 
it's fun because we don't go back and re-rate things, but that's at least worth another half point for me just in the other section, if not a whole point, <laughs> just because it's so fun that there's so many of these additional references out there. Um, yeah, but on that note, let's uh, let's go to another Dan Mintz heavy episode with Tina and the Real Ghost. We're yes. going to go ahead and pause. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched it yet, go ahead and watch it. And if you have watched, uh, come on back after the bump and we will be here to review it. Ghosts aren't real. Yeah, death is the end. It's final. That's right, Lee. Yeah, nothing more. High five. Really? Well, maybe Jeff will have something to say about that. Anyone want to talk to him? I okay. do. Okay. All right. Hands on the Ouija board, everybody. You can ask him anything you want about the afterlife. All right. If you're real, what the ghost eat? It's moving. Uh... S O U P. Soup! He's right! Must be real. Whoa, this changes a lot for me. A lot. Are you okay, Z? No, this is weird. Well, Zeke's changed. Who's next? I have a question. Were you cool when you were alive? V E R Y. Very. Jeff is cool. I, I don't think Jeff is real. Something smells fishy. You. Oh, man. He got you. Ghost burn. That's not funny. <laughs> Jeff's funny. <laughs> uh oh, time's up, everyone. Wait, wait, one more question. Hey, Jeff, do you want to walk me to class? Go, girl. He's a creepy crush on you. Weird. And we're back. Thanks for coming back yeah. with us. Thanks for joining us. And if you're a really diehard fan, thanks for watching the episode with us because I feel that it's always good to watch the episode so you know exactly, or at least I've watched it recently so you know exactly where we're at or or podcasts like us i know there's a few that i listen to that kind of are episodic that go through the episodes and so i was like ah, i don't remember that i don't remember that oh i do remember that so it's, it's always nice to get a refresher so if you did do that that's awesome yeah i i yeah that's why we watched it even if we had um even if we had just recently watched it it's still good to uh to go back and and kind of you know, get a get an idea of what we missed or anything like that mm -hmm. um so yeah. Uh, so this is another one where we don't have any uh, um, title sequence, right? We don't get no, the pest control, even though there's but we do technically get a pest two. There's technically two in the episode, and then we don't get a store next door either. And then it was so fourth wall breaky, where Bob's flipping through, and what was the mm -hmm. what was the the shit? I should have wrote it down. Hugs, no, that was, that was the first one. Hugs not bugs. But then the other one was Beetle something. Beetle Knievel. Yeah, and, he, and he's like, God, what is wrong with the exterminators in this town? He was so tired of having to go yeah. through all these punny exterminators. I thought that was really funny. So they kind of make light of the reason that they're, or not the reason, but they, they make light of all of the different named pest control companies in the town, which is really funny because so far there's been, you know, 60 something or yeah. 50 something, however, however many they did. It does. I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, we've had a couple. It's, it's at least. I mean, we've we've had a couple episodes that haven't had any. Mm -hmm. So, which um, is yeah. I mean, we had to, we did have technically two in this episode just because yes. we, we had the one that actually came to the house. Right. Bugs, not bugs. Which was which um, was um, actually first appeared uh, as the pest control truck in the opening sequence for Topsy. Yep. But that's kind of funny that it, there was a repeat, but it was actually used this time. Mm -hmm. It didn't so, just it didn't um, just drive on by. So yeah, that, that, I, I like when they make note. Of things that are going on, like that, that fourth wall break was was very was very good. I liked it a lot, and I like how irritated Bob got by, you know, just these off these so bizarrely worded, you know, pest controls with all their puns. So yeah. that was good. No, I just I you know it's just funny that they I mean they they, they reference it in in the episode, uh, but when he comes you know when the exterminator comes in, I think I I find it funny that it's uh. That Linda's all excited, like, oh, you know, hugs from bugs, the sensitive bug killer. Yes, he and, and he the guy's goes like, into oh, like is misleading. We actually use a highly toxic yes. chemical and it hugs them to death very slowly. Very slowly. They suffer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, that, that adds just a little bit extra fun because mm -hmm. now you actually hear it got why really he's dark. Bugs. It got yeah. really dark, right? So then Marcus goes downstairs and they find out, there, and he he doesn't even get past the landing to the basement, which also doesn't have a handrail, which really just seems like a safety hazard. If you're carrying up and down supplies and meats and and different ingredients, you're gonna want a handrail on that stairs on that staircase. That's just me though. 
Actually, geez, so. I'm one to talk. I don't think I have. I like, have a banister or a guardrail. No, I have a guardrail going down on my basement, but not on the because it goes out of a landing, and then there's a turn, and on that turn, mm-hmm. there's maybe five steps, four steps that there's no railing on. So I guess it's really not that big of a deal. Well, so I'm not that big of a hypocrite. I'm just a little bit of a hypocrite. Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he gets down. I don't want to spend too much time dwelling on because this is a pretty straightforward story. It really is. Um, you know, he gets down there. Oh nope, he he can't go down there because he thinks those are uh fanta- like what is he uh, phantasmal bugs. Phantasmal bugs. And that he needs to. He can't do it because they're you know they're ghostly and all that. Um. He's too he's and, too afraid. Yep. Is really and what it so comes down to. And so then he leaves, and you know Bob's, you know basically bewildered by this. He's like, oh, come on, you cannot be a real exterminator. Um, and, and so then he leaves and he can't get rid of the bugs. Uh, the kids and I guess Linda decide to grab the Ouija board and try and talk to the entity. Yep. And they, they I mean, they, they do so, right? Yeah. Tina, or, uh, Linda, Tina, I was going to say Tina. Linda's drinking her wine, right? They're doing the seance. They got the whole Ouija board thing and they get answers. And now what is your experience with a Ouija board. I have used uh, one once, and I've, it's pretty dumb. I've never used one. Uh, I or maybe I mean, twice. I don't know. Who knows? It's really, uh, it's my, really, it's really just. Ex- a, go ahead. Go ahead. My experience with a Ouija board is I watched that quote unquote horror movie that came out four years ago called <laughs> Why? you know called Ouija. Why would you do that? Uh, I went with uh, I went with uh, somebody I was uh, seeing at the time just because she was big into horror movies ah uh, gotcha. um and it was whatever it, it, it is what it was it was i don't like horror movies so it was pg-13 i was like oh, i'll be able to get through this sure um but yeah i mean it was just a big old tie-in to sell ouija boards and it wasn't even that good i mean if it was like r-rated i could see maybe you could take it further and do something with it but the fact that it was pg-13 kind of it was just weird um but yeah i've never i've never actually used a ouija board because it's obviously you know not real Mm-hmm. Sorry, of course not. Yeah. Anybody's bubble well, it's, that Ouija it's cardboard still, uh, mass produced by Milton Bradley. I mean, how many entities are out there that have to go through and if know, it were and, real, Milton Bradley would not have the patent on it. Let's just put it yeah, <laughs> exactly. It'd be some some gypsy somewhere, you know, with a crystal ball. Not even that. Like, nobody tint. would have a patent on it. If, yeah. it. if it were real, it would be something anybody could use or make. Like it would. Have, it would be like it, had, it would have to be like specially made, like with different woods and all. You know, just not cardboard and a plastic magnifying glass. Right, right, exactly. So No, so they get on the they get on the Ouija board and they ask if there's a ghost here and what's your name? And his name is Jeff. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny. His name is Jeff. Jeff and the he's ghost. A thir- and, and he's, he's a thirteen year old boy. hmm So of course um Tina's excited about that. Even if he is a phantasmal person, Tina still gets excited. And he decides that he wants to go in the box. So he goes in the box, they put the lid on it, and now Jeff is living in the box. Yeah, and it was a very simple, and I, say, I thought we were going to get a lot more in that scene, but it was a very simple transition to coax the boy into the box. Or oh, yeah. the boy no, ghost, he was, I he was say. very easy. He, he really just wanted to, I guess, get into the box. Yeah. So Linda's like, everything's fine. Jeff's in the, his name is Jeff. He's in the box. But, when, I mean, when you think about it, I mean... You know, are we, are, once you figure out what's actually going on, it makes a lot of sense because who's who's behind the ghost? Yeah, well, of course, it's it's Louise. Spoiler. Um, yeah, I don't know if we were doing spoilers yet, so doesn't matter. All it's right. a review of an episode. If you didn't that's watch true. It. If you, yeah, that's true. If you didn't watch it, you're getting all kinds of spoilers. Yeah, I don't know why I'm tiptoeing around. What the hell is going on? Yeah, no. So they call him Jeff. Louise calls him Jeff, uh, and I thought it was funny because I don't think Gene really knows what ghosts are or what ghosts are supposed to be because he thinks that the Jeff, the ghost could be Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Well, I think Je- – here's the thing that I've What learned. if it's Jeff Bridges? We could make one. Think, yeah, think of the money. I think that's just Gene just try, uh, trying okay. to tie in, you know, anything that – Another pop culture reference? Well, not necessarily a pop culture reference, just something that's going to – you know, that he can tie into Jeff, Jeff what? Jeff Bridges. Maybe it's Jeff Bridges, you know, uh, kind of thing. Not necessarily – I mean, think of another not knowing famous that Jeff. Goldblum. Not, not knowing that, you know, necessarily how ghosts work. And he's just ignorant to that, but it's it's just more so the fact that Gene just wants to tie in some kind of reference to Jeff, and maybe it's Jeff Bridges. You know that that's that, I mean, I that, think, that's I think my Jeff two Bridges cents. Would make more like money every, than Jeff Goldblum. You know everything he says, you know, isn't 
serious isn't meant to be taken seriously. It's just more so for this quick, sharp, you know. Yeah, but it was. But wit. That, it, 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 yeah, but it, it wasn't that sharp. What if it's Jeff Bridges? Imagine the money. I mean, that's. Well, I understand maybe the intent behind it, but yes. it's, it does feel forced. Like that's what I'm, and that's what I meant originally was that it just felt kind of like that was a forced joke. Like he either doesn't know how ghosts work, or he was trying to do something to be funny, but it didn't. It didn't land very well, not to me at least. Yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that one. I don't know what else to say. I should. I, sh- I should say. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna move on. Yeah, anyways, because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which way to take it now that you said that. So, but that's okay. Yeah. I just. It's. It's just. It was just. Again, it's some of those things that. That when you put when I point it out to myself when I'm watching and then here in the podcast, it just. It, like some 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 jokes and some ga- uh, things that in the episode they feel so effortless, mm-hmm. and then this one just kind of felt like they needed something for Gene to say, and oh, what can we do? Right, but exactly. Where, where was it going? Like, where where was this meant to go? Because it just didn't it didn't go anywhere. It was here's Jeff. What if what if it's Jeff Bridges? Let's imagine the money. Okay, you can't. You know, are there are there no deceased Jeffs that it could have been? Apparently, that's, yeah, yeah. I feel like I mean, that that's, could that's have been. That's when I said, "Can you think of another famous yeah. Jeff?" I was trying to lead you into thinking, "What are some Jeffs that have a been Jeff there? that has passed away?" Jeff that, that Foxworthy. Know. People just no, no. He's still alive. Yeah, rip, rip his yeah. career though. <laughs> <laughs> See, and maybe that could have been the joke. What if it's Jeff Foxworthy's career? <laughs> or something. Yeah. You know. Okay. See, now that's actually kind of funny. Not that you know. I mean, he had the largest career ever, but then he just you know. Kind but he did. I mean, he, and... he was huge for a long time. Yeah, he was. And, and, and for, for for at least a two decades. I mean, well, and then that whole blue mean, collar comedy tour with him and yeah, that Bill Ingvall for... and the other Ron White and I think there was oh yeah Larry the Cable Larry. Guy. Ugh. Kilmeter. Yeah. No, yeah, they, the, the four of them had that you know, comedy tour. He had the you know, and didn't Jeff Fox really had his own sitcom? He had the Are You Smart? He had fifth two grader. TV shows. Yeah. Uh, like so sitcoms, I should say, and then he had the already smarter than the fifth grader. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway, we'll we'll move on from that. Tina keeps the box. It's the thirteen year old boy. So you know, of course, they're going to take him to school, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and which is what you they, do they, with ghosts is you put them in a shoebox and then you take them to school. So they take him to lunch, or and and they're well, they kind of they, introduce just, everybody to Jeff. Yeah. So, right, so the, the, you know, the rest the, of the crew comes over, Tammy, yeah. Jocelyn, Zeke, and, and Jimmy Jr., and they're like, you know, that's not a ghost, you're lying, and then they, so for some reason, Louise has the Ouija board with her. Which, yeah, why not? pulls it out to do more ghost communicating, and it turns out that, that they end up, that she ends up being able to trick the rest of them into thinking there is a ghost. So, like, hey, Jeff, you know... Were you, you know, were you popular? And she ends up spilling out very. <laughs> yes. And like, oh, Jeff's and, cool, everybody. Jocelyn's so awful. Yeah, and then it's uh, what do ghosts eat? Because Zeke doesn't believe them. They spell out soup. soup. And he goes, oh my gosh, oh my God. right, <laughs> <laughs> must be real. And then and then Zeke is a believer right then and there. That's all the proof he needed. And then Jimmy Jimmy Jr. is like, I don't know, something smells fishy. And then it goes to the letter U, and he's like, ah, ha, ha, ghost burn. Mm-hmm. Ghost, ghost so burn. They, yeah. So then they all believe that it's a, uh, that it's a real ghost. Mm-hmm. And so then Tina thinks, you know, Tina's still believing it, and they end up walking to class together. Tina t- goes to the butterfly sanctuary, and she thinks that just giving her butterfly kisses. I thought this was kind of funny. This, this this sequence was really funny because she's sitting there with a box. The sequence the where she's making out with the butterfly. Well, not even really. Just the the thing even before that, like she's like, you know, are we holding hands? Jeff, you tell me if you're like if you're just a box, right? And she goes, Oh my god, I'm talking to a box. Right. Like but she she the realizes box. it then and there. Yeah. And then the butterfly comes up and lands like on her lips and is like, Oh, I'm getting butterfly kisses from a real butterfly. Is this a sign? Maybe it's Jeff. And so then she starts. You know, making the yeah. you know, like kissing the butterfly, which is really and then weird. The guy comes over and he's like, "No eating the butterfly." <laughs> no, no, goes, oh, it no. wasn't eating. It, he came over and startled her, and then she inhales, <gasps> and then inhales yeah. the butterfly, <laughs> which I I laughed at that a lot. I thought that was really funny. And he, you know, so then she's like, "No, who's she?" She's like, "I've got Jeff here." And he goes, "Who's Jeff?" And then she's like, "You know, oh my god, I don't know. Are we friends? Are we more?" And he goes, "No, I just want to know what was in the box." Yeah, as long as it's not food or drink, you're fine. It's not food or drink yeah. now. All right, then you're fine. So then. Um, 
So then they, you know, you continue on with that story. Uh, she announces that they're dating. She goes to school the next day. It's a big deal. It is a huge deal. That they're dating. Right. It's, and it's so weird. Um, and they're, they're the new it couple. And she's going to go get food. And she leaves the box with the friends because she's like, you're smothering it. You know, because Zeke's like, you're smothering it. Let him breathe. You know, he's already in a box. Right, uh, right. So, so, so food and it, well, it, was, it was Tammy. Tammy was co- trying to coax oh. the box yeah. away. Right, was That's right. Thing. Then, uh, it's like Tina, you're smothering him. You should just leave time. him here. You could go, you know, go get some food in line. And then when they go get food, or she goes she get food, she comes and... back, and then it's gone because Tammy took Jeff to the bathroom to wipe off some mustard that was Supposedly on his box. To wipe off some mustard. Yeah. Um, and then they get in there, and it turns out Jeff's changed his allegiance. He's gonna date. He's now pro. He's now pro Tammy. Yeah. Tina and I are taking a break. Tammy, you are hoppy, my GF. And so then Louise cannot believe it. She's like, what? Because, you know, that's obviously, this is her gag. And everybody else is, you know, I guess playing along with it. I don't think everybody's playing along. I think they all either no, I know, believed I, I or mean, wanted to believe. So they're yeah, just, I know. I didn't, yes, I, didn't be- I, I didn't mean that they were playing along as in <clears throat> continuing the ruse. Like they're literally acting like, because cause Tammy wrote that. Right. So she she wrote that knowing that he couldn't write that, but she still honestly believed there was a ghost in the box. It's a ghost in the box. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so writing it on the mirror with a uh, hot breath, and you know, saying I'm I'm with Tina or I'm with Tammy now, and Tina kind of goes into a big depressive spiral. Yep, and so that's when. Louise explains to the family that she made up the whole thing. And Bob obviously knew she made up the whole thing, but Jean and Well that that's the thing's like, well yeah, obviously that's that's the obvious thing that happened, but you guys didn't know that? Like that like that was Bob's realization. It was like he already knew either that exact thing was going on or something. Yeah, because she goes, I thought it was pretty obvious. I named the ghost Jeff. Yeah, because Jeff is the stupidest name I could think of for a ghost. Tina's gonna be okay. I made her a PB and J. She said she didn't want it, so I ate it. She was still sad, so I made her another PB&J. She didn't want that one either, so I ate it. Anyway, Tina wants to be alone for a little while, and we're out of peanut butter. Guys, I hate to break your hearts, too, but Jeff isn't real. What are you talking about? I was controlling the Ouija board. I was messing with you guys. Yeah, I thought that was pretty obvious. I named him Jeff. That's the stupidest name for a ghost I could think of. (laughs) Of course. Oh, yeah. I know Jeff's not real. It's Louis Louise, sure. Wait, so let me get this straight. His name's not Jeff, but he's real. No, Gene, there is no Jeff. I just thought it would be funny. I didn't think Tina would fall in love with him, and I definitely didn't think Tammy was going to pull the same crap as me but better with that mirror thing and now i'm gonna go tell tina and say i'm sorry and we're all gonna laugh about this someday right guys and i like i like i like uh and this actually part i do like with gene because again this kind of talks back to what we've said before with him still kind of being in that weird half innocent half not he goes wait let me get this straight you know his name's not jeff but he is a real ghost you know so he's still like he's like oh yeah of course his name's not jeff but he's still he's still real right (laughs) right and he's not no, um, he's not. And Jean, yeah, Jean kind of, you know, and she's like, I didn't mean to hurt. Yeah, and, <clears throat> and and Louise is like, I didn't mean for Tina to fall in love with him, and I definitely didn't mean for Tammy to to pull, you know, do something like me, but even better with the mirror thing. Right. Exactly. Uh, so so then she has to go in and apologize to Tina, and then it's like, well, no, you can't go in and apologize to Tina. She's really having a rough time right now, and this would only make it worse. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So you can't a, you can't tell her just yet. Yeah, because she, you know they say she got catfished by a box. Yeah, that's what Jean said. Yeah. And um, so the next day is Halloween, and uh, they were all going to go. We we kind of glossed over this, but they're going to uh, they had, they're going uh, to the, the older graveyard. kids are going to uh, to a graveyard because right. apparently is a rite of passage. That's where the cool and kids go. Louise and. And Jean are going to go trick-or-treating, but I think they're going to go to the campground first because they're going to try to get some uh, some revenge on Tammy. So I'm going to make mention of their costumes because we've done this for all the other episodes. Yeah, I'll always. I'll always make mention of the costumes. Um, so Jean, I like that Jean, Jean is the is first Turner that we see. He's Turner and Hooch. He's half Hanks, half dog. And then and uh, Louise then is the... Louise is a shiny scorpion person or... <laughs> 
or she's Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling from, from the from major the... motion picture Drive. It's just such a weird random costume. Now, now, did she say major motion picture or major yeah, motion major picture, picture trailer? Trailer. She said the so trailer. So did the yeah. movie not even drop yet, or did she just not see the movie? She probably didn't see the movie because she that's an R-rated movie. Oh, okay, that's probably why. So she, uh, she, yeah, she would have seen the the trailer for sure. Right. Yeah, the movie came out like I think three or four years before that. Oh, okay. But she would okay. not have seen the movie. So, because she's, you know, she's, she's nine. She's so. not supposed to be watching the yeah. R-rated movies. That makes sense. But yeah, I, but then of course I love positive Linda about everything. She's like, ooh, so violent yet so well reviewed. Right. And so, and then Tina's not dressed because she's going to go, um, go to the cemetery. Um, she says she's going to hang out at home for a while and then go and to the And watch other people have fun. And then she goes out to the window and she says, ooh, look, that kid's having fun. And was, like, I laughed audibly, but, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad how they did that. Right? You know, she's just there all mopey yeah. and gets to just see this kid. Like, oh, that kid's having fun. It's like, yeah. oh, man. Like, you feel for her. Like, they, they did yeah. a good job with the feels. Yeah, but you can, yeah. So, um, so then they get to the, the, the cemetery and they're all there. Uh, Tina's not there yet, though. Uh, but the kids, Gina and Louise, and then everybody else, Tina, jo- or Tammy, Jocelyn, Zeke, and Jimmy are there because um, they are like, "Where, where's Tina? Crying her butt, you know, crying into her butt." And it's like, and "No, no, I'm right here, and my butt is dry and strong. strong." Yeah, that's what it was. So they all go into this crypt, or into this mausoleum, and so then they get in there, and they basically pretend they're basically they're locked out it sounds like they get in there and they're locked in not locked out they're locked in mm-hmm. and somebody pulls up a flashlight uh, someone knocks jeff out of tammy's hands oh no it's a candle it's a candle because it's lavender it's a lavender candle that zeke took from his dad's hot tub <laughs> and he's like it kind of ruins the tension kind of ruins <laughs> the mood the and it's like it's okay i'm really relaxed right now yeah He's like, yeah, I'm feeling really relaxed all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So then the door slams shut, and they pretend, and they're locked in. And you, you find out later that Tina's pretending that that people are locked in. Yes. Um, and so then they 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 pull the candle, and they see that there's um words on the mausoleum walls, and it says, "You are all condemned to eternal damnation in here with me." This is Jeff. Mm-hmm. And so then they all think that Jeff trapped him in there. Tina kind of comes clean afterwards, saying that uh, pretty quick too. Actually, I thought I thought she, yeah. you know there, she could have let that go a little bit while longer and really get her yeah. get well, her. Well, I think what revenge. happened is the bug the bugs happened. Oh, that's right. And then that kind of stopped it. I yeah, think, Louise put the bugs in Jeff's box, and that was and a, then, that was a big thing. And she goes, "Listen, I've got you know." And the Tina's like, "Listen, I got something to say. We're not trapped. Ghost isn't real. My sister made him up because she heard the whole conversation the previous night." Mm-hmm. Because the walls are so thin in that house. I like what she says, though, because she goes, but, you know, she, she goes, last night when I heard my family talking about how fake he was, I realized that he definitely was fake. <laughs> yeah, her lines are pretty good. And then she has a good kind of, good kind of, what I feel is uh, a very South Parkian ending. In the sense that it's, you know, we, you know, it, basically it's like the moral of the story. She's like, I don't need a boy to pay attention to me. I need me to pay attention to me. And Jean, it's okay to watch Ch- Kitchen Nightmares alone. Uh, it's okay, you know, for, you know, for all these things to happen. It, it basically is just kind of Tina saying, I gotta, I'm going to take care of me for a bit. And and the, and the rest okay. will follow at that point. Exactly, yeah. Um, but then they miss Halloween. And there, that's it. Jean, Jean makes a comment about going to San Diego because they still have trick-or-treating there. Right. And that's the end of that story. That wraps it up. You know, yeah, yep. exactly. And then uh, we get back we can... to the ghosts in Bob's restaurant. Yeah, we can talk about that real quickly because we never mentioned that story. Really just some guys come first in. Off, but... First off, Jordan Peele again. Gotta mm-hmm. love when Jordan Peele's back. Always. Um, yeah, we only, had a, we only had one episode in between his last appearance. Yeah. <laughs> um, he plays one of the ghost... Uh, Ghost Hunters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don, I think it is. I don't remember which one it is. I don't is. remember. But what happens is, is what the exterminator, you know, creep gets weirded out and he leaves. But then we get 
kind of some word of mouth thing going on where we now have ghost hunters come in as Bob's trying to phone an actual exterminator to get rid of those flying bugs, which mm -hmm. I don't know if he ever gets solved by the end of the episode. <clears throat> and so they come in and they just start doing tests and you know, there's like a black light going on and a bunch of weird equipment and a couple customers are walking. It's like, hey, what are they doing? And they're like, um, nothing. How can I help you? And it's like, we're looking for ghosts. Ooh, honey, they have ghosts. Let's eat here. And Bob's like, yep, we have ghosts. There's a ghost in every booth. Come on in. And so he immediately just flips the switch to there's no such thing as ghosts to, oh my gosh, customers. Let Yeah, whatever. We have all the he's ghosts still, yeah, exactly. you want. He's, he's He's being the he's being the businessman. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really tough. Yeah, he, they hardly have any business, so this is a big moment. So he's just trying to milk it for all it's worth until until it's over. And so these mm -hmm. exterminators are there for I don't know a day or two. It seems like and They're there for for a while. Eleven think, eleven burgers uh, is what the total comes to at the end of the uh, at the end of the show. That's how many burgers yeah, they, so, they've ordered to total. So I would think that that's maybe four days, at least four days. Yeah, two 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 or three a day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean they're there for the for the week. I don't know how long this episode is. There's at least there's at least three days of school. And how many? Well, how many burgers of the day are there? There's this four. Four. Okay, so there. That's four days total that the episode lasts, and they're there for at least we can say three of them then. So based on that math that we just did in our heads randomly sure. because we're really good at guessing. So they come in, they do their experiments, the people come in and, and you know, Teddy makes a point. He's like, wow, people really like your burgers when there's a dead person in your restaurant. <laughs> And then uh, they, they leave, and they're like, okay, and that uh, time to settle up. You guys uh, ate 11 burgers, and then uh, I forget what the price is, and they're like, yeah, well, we... They didn't, he didn't say a price. No. He just said, you owe, you owe for 11 burgers. For 11 burgers. And they gotcha. were trying to do a swap. Like, well, we did all this testing, so you yeah. owe us for that. So it sounds like that's going to be pretty even. He's like, uh, no, you guys have to pay. He's like, well, the thing about that is we've been dead for, you know, for a long, 12 for 12 years. years. And, like, and then he walks in front of him and he's like, no, seriously, you guys have to pay. And he's like, okay, do you take credit card? Like, they were trying to get out of it, but Bob just steps in front of him. He's yeah. like, no, you guys are paying. No, I mean, it was just, if you've ever so. seen a Ghost Hunter episode, they were just trying to recreate a lot of that. They were doing ultrasounds. They were trying to get, like, ultrasonic sound waves to try to tr track these ghosts. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm not, you, if, if you've listened to any of this podcast, you know that Brian and I aren't fans of the paranormal that much we are what you would call skeptics sure agnostics we don't know well yeah i know I, i'm pretty <laughs> sure that i know that there's no ghosts uh no it, but yeah it's it's just weird uh because you know a good chunk of that b story is just about these these guys trying to just do their tests see if there's ghosts here yeah, yeah. That's all like, it is. It's, there's not a lot to it and, and i think it's kind of a squandered story that could have been maybe an a story for a different episode maybe um because it, it does feel kind of like it's just put in there to kind of continue a little bit of this ghost of, theme that's going on but yeah of the ghost things or <clears throat> the bugs that were in bob's uh restaurant that, that i don't think that ever got resolved mm -hmm. so. no not, not that we know of he was just about to call Bevel knievel and then he's you know make makes the complaint about well that's that's one thing actually i don't get because he says that he already made another appointment for with a new one, and then he's calling Beetle Knievel. So, why is he calling a third one at that point? Oh, that uh, maybe because one of the exterminators also thought that there were ghosts, and then they left because they were also afraid of ghosts. That's you know, that's my guess is oh, now I have to call another one. Maybe I don't know. Because well, because he yeah, because I mean, because they they get the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, and he's like, the restaurant is closed now. Thank you for not helping. And I called another exterminator, not that you care, is what he says. Yeah. And then you're that's right. when they're doing that's when they're doing the Ouija board. And then right. after that, they talk about Beetle Knievel. Uh huh. The 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 following day. Um That's true. So maybe maybe they got uh Maybe he got scared from the ghost, from all the ghost testing, and then they have to call another exterminator. That's my guess. Let's uh, close out your tab here. You guys ate uh, 11 burgers. All delicious. We were about to settle the bill with you too, Bob. Let's see. We did a beta wave test, a black light scan, and an audio spectral recording. With all these services rendered, looks like it's going to be a wash. Bye, Bob. Bye, Linda. You can't leave. You have to pay for your food. We can't pay you. Hmm, why? Should we tell him, Phil? Mm-hmm. We've been dead for 12 years. Oh, my God, Bobby, the ghost. I knew it. Bye. Wait, 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 hold on. Watch out, Bobby. They're going to walk right through you. Mm. Do you take credit cards? 
That's my guess. So, that's it. That's yeah, the episode. But they, don't, but they don't show that, and that's. I'm just wondering what happened to the second exterminator in there, or if it is just a weird miss in continuity. We'll never know. We'll never know unless we get Stephen and Kelvin on the show again. Hey guys, in this episode, yeah, right. What's the deal? Uh, anytime something like that <laughs> happens, a wizard did it. it. It pretty much. It was lost on the cutting room floor. Pretty much is what would happen, is my guess. Mm-hmm. Is that they had something, but cut for time. And it is kind of a small, small thing, but it you know it's just that line there. We have to call another exterminator. Let's go with Beetle Knievel. But um, I don't know. I don't know because that's when uh, this you know Teddy's in there too because he's sitting there at the front with Teddy. And Marcus is outside, you know, <laughs> just kind of staring into the restaurant. Right, because he won't go in because there's ghosts everywhere. Sure. Uh, let's talk about the four burgers quick. Sure. Those are our four burgers of the day. We had the Chex- the Texas Chainsaw Massacred burger, which would most likely have cheese curds on it. Uh, there was the Human Polenta Pede burger, which is just a reference to the Human Centipede, which is an awful, gross movie. Uh, yes, we it had is. the Kales from the Crypt burger, which is, of course, a kale burger or a kale sarol. And then there was the Paranormal Pepper Jack Activity Burger, which is a reference to Paranormal Activity. Mm-hmm. So all all pretty, pretty fun puns on Halloween horror movies. Um, I guess horror movies that Halloween movies, but just movies that deal with horror themes. Have you seen any of those? Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Human Centipede, Tales from the Crypt, or Paranormal Activity? Yes, I have. I mean, seen... Tales from the Crypt is a TV show. Yes, so. I've seen a few Tales of the Crypts. Crypt Keeper really used to creep me out. They did such a good job mm-hmm. with him, the puppeteers. Uh, they were really good. Um, and I have seen the Paranormal Activity, um, and I have seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've seen the remake, I believe, of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't okay. think I've seen the new one, or the old one, or the sequel following the, the original. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, don't watch Human Centipede. You've seen the South Park episode about it. I have seen, yeah, Human Cent iPad. I've seen that one. I, <laughs> I which which is disgusting and hilarious at the same time. I don't yeah. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that to be grossed out. I can see horror and scary because it's scary and suspenseful. I can't see like gross. Mm-hmm. But I think that most, that's kind of where I draw the line. I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. I haven't I haven't seen Human Centipede. I don't want to. I don't. Ugh, ugh. I've I've seen enough of it in like clips and stuff, mm-hmm. and then enough from. Uh, enough from the it's pop culture in general. The, the, exactly, yeah. I know enough to know not to watch it. And then they made a sequel to it. Mm-hmm. Like really gross. Well, yeah. Now they have to. See, now it's Human Millipede. It's even more, <laughs> even <laughs> oh, more <gross>. legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's just body after body. Yeah. Gross. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the title real quickly. Um, sure. We talked about it last week a little bit. Uh, Tina and the Real Ghost is just a pun on the the film Lars and the Real Girl. Mm-hmm which is a great movie with Ryan Gosling, speaking of. Um, and the movie actually takes place in a town in Wisconsin. So it's pretty cool. Oh, all right. During yeah. winter, even. Which town? So, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. You're the worst. I think it's a fake town. Oh. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a real city. I think they just that's, make up That's cities. even worse, then, if they're just making up cities. There's plenty of goofy c- cities that we could have in, in a major really, motion I mean, picture. I think it's better if they don't have a real city, even if it is a real state. Ah, whatever. Uh, oh, Fine. I'm going to look it up now real quick. Hold on a second, friends. Lars and the real <laughs> ghost setting. There we go. Uh, good, good job. <clears throat> oh, and this one is wrong. This says the film is set in winter in an unnamed small town in a Midwestern state. Northern Michigan or Minnesota, most likely. Uh, actually, it's Wisconsin. They say it in the movie. Yeah, asshole. <laughs> oh, burn. Yeah, it's not in any, like, any any of these. Oh, I typed in Lars and the Real Ghost, not Lars and the Real Girl. <laughs> Oops. Way to go, man. You're just a consummate got, professional over there. The, I, got, I got Bob's Burgers. Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say what town. Maybe fine. Maybe they just left it. That's fine. We don't need it to be real. So but They filmed it on location in a bunch of places in Canada. But, yeah, it just says, um, it just says the film set in the American state of Wisconsin. But yes, go watch that movie. It has nothing to do with this with the show, really. Um, other than uh, a loose tie into the fact that people pretend that Lars's girlfriend is real to help him, 
And so that's kind of what they are doing with Tina to help. Like, Louise is doing that with Tina to pretend that Jeff is real. That's about the only real tie-in to the movie. Um, But it was a really good movie. It's definitely worth watching if you haven't yet. I haven't, Um, so I guess I'll have to watch it now. You will. It's a good movie. Um, You you had already mentioned that Hugs Out Bugs was in Topsy. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, the playground is uh, the second time we've seen that playground. First time since Spaghetti Western and Meatballs. Mm-hmm. The sketch artist who drew Tina and Jeff is the same one from Moody Foodie who drew like the zombies and yep. stuff. Yep. It's fifty dollars. Uh, fifty dollars. You can't buy that guy. Can't. What was it? That's so good for the for that price. Look at what you're getting. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's about it for like real fun trivia for this episode. Um, and we mentioned it also that this this is the, the the first and so far only show of a holiday of a holiday show shown after the actual holiday. Right. Just again, which we already which we already mentioned. It. Yeah, Fox and World Series and baseball. You just can't plan it any. No, sometimes you can't. So, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, as far as our our. You always want to end before we give numbers. You're always like, "Is it for this episode?" No, no, no. But we got to do the numbers. Way, the way you say the way you say it though makes it sound like you're just ready to end the podcast. I am. I am ready to end the podcast right now. You would be. You said no, no rating on this one. This one gets a fat old H for Halloween. H for Halloween. That's right. So we'll be back. Uh, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna crunch the numbers, and on nice. the other side, we're gonna do a two minute mathematical review. The butterflies are beautiful this time of year. The rest of the time, they're caterpillars. <laughs> Are we holding hands? I can't really tell. Jeff, you tell me if you were just a box, right? You're just a box, aren't you? I'm on a date with a box. Oh my god. Wow. I'm getting butterfly kisses from a butterfly. Is it you, Jeff? Is this a sign? Mm. Mm. Oh boy, you really are real. And we're back now. Time to do we are what back. we came Before here to we start. do. start. Brian, you were worried that our numbers were going to be uh, way different, so this will be fun. Oh, okay. All right, this will be fun. You got your two minutes? I got my two minutes. You ready? Of course I'm ready. All right, go. All right, we have the episode fun bits at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, we did fail to mention that there was one song in the episode, uh, the Jeff weird jingle. Uh-huh. Um, gave it a seven for the four burgers and then the two uh, the two things. I know the they weren't at the beginning, shots. but the but the burgers were good. So it still counts. Um, yeah, I gave mine an eight. The burgers were really good, um, and I did like Bevel Knievel and the fact that Bob just made a groaning noise when he had to go and like like what is wrong with all self referential there? Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. a little self referential. Thanks. That's that's a better way to say uh, it. Uh, story I gave a seven. Uh, like we talked about, it was a good story, good serviceable story, but the B story felt kind of lost, mm-hmm. uh, which would have made maybe a better A story in a different episode. But it was it was good. It was good to get the kids out and have them do their own thing again. Right. I uh, gave it a seven as well, and pretty much for those reasons. Sweet humor. I gave a seven. Uh, laughed a little bit. Laughed enough. Uh, it was it, it was still funny, uh, but it left me wanting a little bit more humor in certain areas. And we talked about the, uh, the Jeff Bridges joke, how that maybe could have been better, at least mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a seven for that. Uh, I gave it a seven also. Yeah, this is, this is getting to be dead out almost. Um, I don't know. Nothing really jumped out at me. There were a lot of, there were some funny moments that I really enjoyed um, when, uh, you know, Hey, you know, customers really like it when you have ghosts here and what's wrong with the exterminators in our town. And, you know, the little throw, mm-hmm. you know, the little throwaway. It's like, Oh yeah. Gee, um, well, Tammy in the bathroom. We never even talked about that. It's like I don't poop. You know, I don't poop at school. I only do number one. I don't do number two. And then one, that one time, Jocelyn clogged the toilet. That wasn't me. Sorry, Jocelyn. Like that. That whole thing was yeah. really funny. Yeah. So give it a, give uh, it a seven. Then, still solid. The, then other, I gave an eight. Uh, the Jeff song again. I, I still kind of teeter with where other where that songs belong. But Jeff, uh, Jordan Peele, uh, coming back. Brian Husky coming back uh, gives me an eight for the other. And I gave the other a uh, seven. Uh, yeah. I like seeing the costumes. I always think the costumes are really clever. Uh, in the mm-hmm. show, so oh, yeah. that's one of the things I really like to see the most is the, yeah. is the costumes when it's Halloween. So give it a seven. Yeah. So seven point one for me, seven point two for you, seven point one five overall. Wow, that was actually pretty so, spot on. Told there. You, told you that we. Uh, I thought it was going to be really different, just just because of the way you led in the episode. So the I, thought I, you were, I thought you were going to be of, really high. I'm like, of, really? Uh, it's like the old bait and switch, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, no, but yeah. So I mean, it's it's a it's a good episode. I mean, Fortnite last last year's Halloween's episode was 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 you know really good it, they're not all going to be winners um and not to say that this episode was bad seven point you know seven seven is still very good yeah seven's a great uh, episode it's just um 
it's just that's that's where it's gonna land um for anybody listening to this uh a couple days after we release this podcast maybe next week uh tuesday february 5th tbs is going to be airing tina and the real ghost at their time slot the bob's burger 7 30 p.m eastern 6 30 p.m central so you can download us listen to us and then go watch the episode again on tbs if you have that so that's kind of cool it could that's like one of the few times that that our episode actually matches up with something on tv that's right which means that this week, which was tonight, which we've already missed the episodes because they already happened today. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but maybe even tom- yeah, tomorrow they're playing them too. But tomorrow is a Wednesday. Yesterday. This is, I don't know why we're doing this. But yesterday would have been um, I Get Psychic Out of You and the Equestronauts, which we talked about, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's so. pretty cool. We're getting, we're getting... getting to that time now where, where it's back in rotation, where if you, if you have it, you can come listen to us and watch it again. That's right. Or listen to us so. and watch it again anyway. And why not? I do that sometimes. You... I mean, I rewatched. Oh, and time, then you so. listen to us. I'm like, that's weird. I don't need to listen to us. I did the talking. <laughs> yeah, I did all the talking. I know what I said. All right. So. I think it's gonna do it for us. Um, be on the lookout for our Burger Bites episode. Something that we're kind of in the discussion about. They're just gonna be shorter, little, tinier episodes. <laughs> you, you not say necessarily. They're gonna be shorter. About, I know. But yeah, and then we're gonna go off. They're gonna be like an hour and a half long. <laughs> you know, who's gonna listen to that crap? So um, we're also on Twitter, on Instagram, at Burgers Fries Pod. You can find us where you found us today. You, uh, you are you, you are just getting blown up over there on your on your Discord. Blowing up on the Discord? Yeah, aren't you getting Discord messages? I don't know. I don't hear any Discord messages. Then it must be my computer, which is good because I thought they were coming through your microphone. No, it's not me at all. I have, I, have, I have zero. Uh, you're you're talking to me right now, so you're the only one that messes just me where on Discord. Where am I getting Discord messages from? Because I don't even have it up anyway. Continue on before yeah, they can right, find yeah, us. Yeah, right. Well, it's too late now. They, they, they all stopped listening. We hit the 50-minute 50, 50 mark, and that's it. It's done. So, anyway. Um, Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, same burger time, same burger channel. We'll be back next week with uh, with an episode. So, that's going to do, do it for episode us. We're gonna be yep, back episode next with? week Mr. is going to be... Hang on. Let me go. I can find it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It's okay, Friends it. with Burger Fits. Yep. Friends with Burger Teddy Fits. episode. Yeah, it is a good Teddy. We haven't had a lot of Teddy uh, this season, so... I mean, uh, we don't need a lot. We've had two episodes, and he's been in one of them, so... Right. It's not like it's... It's not like we have a bad ratio. Yeah, but it's always good when you have we've a nice... we have had more Teddy than we've had more this season. Oh, that's very true. Yes, that's very true. Where more well, seems to have been kind of just fallen off the face of the earth after the last season or so. Yeah. So, all right, that's going to so. do it for us. We are the Burgers and Fries Podcast. We do want to say thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm Brian. I'm Ryan. Don't you tell me no lies. I'm a burger, 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 burger.